Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Sam, and I'm a student of the Bible. I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for 22 years, and I am a writer, and my training involves biblical studies, theology, and biblical languages. We're going to jump into James chapter 1, starting verse 9, and we're going to go all the way through um, verse 18 today. Um, and we need to realize that this is a part of an entire um, paragraph here, or a couple paragraphs here, that... They're all thematically kind of woven together, okay? So uh, to kind of understand where we've been, he kind of tells who he is, who he's writing to, all that kind of stuff. And then James says, um, I want you to consider it pure joy when you go through these trials, these um, uh, calamities, whatever you want to call it, when you fall into them or when they fall on you, this is kind of the language there of many kinds. You know, the testing of your faith is going to produce perseverance is what he says. And then he says, if you lack wisdom and understanding why, you know, how you're supposed to grow through this and what you're supposed to do with it, um, ask God. God was generous and he wants to give it to you. He's not going to say no if you ask him, you know, for wisdom and understanding that kind of stuff. He may not tell you why you're going through the thing. Um, he may just tell you, um, give you wisdom to figure out how to grow through it. Um, but we should do it and uh, it says in the NIV, not doubting, and a lot of versions say not doubting, but really that word there means no hesitation, um, no second guessing, not like really, you know, uh, overthinking it kind of a deal, just kind of in faith, in trust, asking, um, because uh, we shouldn't expect that God would answer or the Lord would answer something that we hesitate to ask him um, kind of a deal. So here we are in chapter um, 1, verse 9. This is what he goes on to say. He says, believers in, in NIV, believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower, for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. So it seems like James has an axe to grind a little bit with rich people um, and how they're accumulating their wealth, using their wealth um, versus uh, how people who are um, in humble circumstances really are kind of seeing what he deems as more important and more necessary. Um, and so he says that if you're in humble circumstances, you should take pride in your high position that you have with God because those who are humble will be exalted, right? And those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And so he says, you know, uh, the rich or the, the person who is full of themselves and full of the things, you know, of this earth, but not really rich towards God, um, should take pride in their humiliation being brought down. Why? Because then you are able then to be lifted up kind of a deal. I think is what is his, um, rhetorical purpose of saying that is, um, cause he's, he's saying, listen, all this stuff you want to accumulate and take pride in is all fading away. It's all going away and it's going to happen even though you go about your own business. And then he says this, and I think this is fascinating. And I want to dwell on verses 12, 13 and 14 for a little bit here. Okay. Verse 12 it says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. He's kind of hearkening back to verse two. when he says, when you go through various trials, you know, calamities, it's the exact same word. Okay. Um, in there, verse, uh, what is this, verse 12, uh, the word there for trials is the word uh, piresmon, okay, piresmon, and it's uh, it's the same root, same word as trials from verse 2, um, and it's going to be the same word that we're going to see over and over and over again, um, 13, 14, all of that, okay, so 12, 13, 14, blessed is the one who perseveres under the trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, okay, this is verse 13, when tempted, and it's the same word as trial, okay, exact same word, no difference. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. God is trying me. God's bringing this calamity on me, okay? For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. And these are the exact same words, verse 2, verse 12, verse 13, all the way down, verse 14, all of it is the, the word temptation and trial are interchangeable, same word, okay? Uh, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone, verse 14, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. 
And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Uh, so the, the question that I, I started rolling around in my head was, okay, so um, in verse 2, what we read is that consider a pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you um, face, and that word face there literally means whenever you fall into or um, are surrounded by trials or these calamities, that kind of stuff. I think the word we use afflictions of many kinds, of various kinds. But then he goes on to say, blessed is the person who perseveres under that. And uh, th this word um, perseveres or endures is the same word as he's used before, upom upomone, right? So he's, he's definitely hearkening back to, to verse 2 and verse 3 there. You know, the testing of your faith produces perseverance, endurance. And he says, um, blessed is the one who perseveres under that kind of trial because having stood that test, same word that he used there, um, being approved, dokimos, the same word as test, you know, going through the test there, testing of your faith. Um, the person stood, who stands the test, that person will receive the crown of life, the Lord has promised those who love him. But he makes a qualification here. And I, I love the fact that the NIV talks about trials and temptations. Um, it's the same Greek word. But it's used in a different context, in a different sense. Because the trials that are talked about in verse 2 and verse 3, that are the testing of your faith, these are trials that um, you fall into or that fall upon you. These are not things that, um, these are not consequences of your behavior. But we can use this same Greek word to um, when it's in a different context, it can mean something completely different. The context that he's about to use in verse 13 is different because the context in verse 13 and 14 that he says is, okay, so when when you are tempted, when when these try this you know, you're afflicted, when you're have this calamity on you in a different kind of a sense, no one should say, God is the one doing it to me. For God can't have that to happen to him, and he's not going to do that to anybody else. He doesn't do that anywhere else. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. So there's a difference here between a calamity that falls on you, a, a, an affliction that falls on you, and an affliction that you cause yourself. And a calamity that you have caused as a result of an action that you've done, it's a consequence. So there are calamities that happen to us and a calamity that are consequences of our behaviors and are consequences of um, our desires and all that kind of thing. Um, and so I, I think what he's, he's kind of um, geniusly doing here is the first part when he talks about trials and persevering through them, He's kind of um, alluding to those who are um, humble in, in humble circumstances, who are exalted. Um, he's kind of tying that into these. But then he also kind of is poking at those who are exalting themselves and rich and you know, trusting the things of this world that are fading away. He's talking about the temptation of that. And so almost in a genius way, he starts talking about the lure, the temptation of that. And the reason that you're tempted by this stuff is because your own evil desires are luring you towards them. Each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed with coveting all this stuff and whatever. Um, and it gives birth to, this desire gives birth to sin and sin what's full grown gives birth to death. It's like James is trying to help us understand this idea and the main difference between a trial that you go through because it happens to you and temptation that happens as a result of your own actions, your own desires, and these are the consequences of those things, okay? Um, and he says, don't, don't be deceived by this. The good things come from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God does not give the gift of temptation, does not give the gift of the consequences of your covetousness and your, you know, your greed and all that. Those are not the good gifts from God. God gives every good and perfect gift. Um, and then he says, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. that We might be kind of first fruits 
of all he created. So I think it's important that we understand that there, uh, and I love the way the NIV puts it, trials and temptations. Um, those two are, they're rooted in the same thing, but the, but the um, circumstances surrounding them and why they happen are very different. Um, and so we should not equate the things that we're tempted by because of our actions and the consequences of those things to the consequences of things that just naturally fall upon us and happen um, to us. And so that's, um, I think, what James is trying to allude to here. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me in James chapter one so far. It's been great. Um, give me a, a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.